Yeah, danger is my assignment. I could send to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. So here I am, flying to Greece to work with a fellow agent, Jim Andrews. For years, the commissioners had Jim chasing the Iron Banner, a legendary iron swastika about 18 inches high and containing inside information on hidden bank accounts and other assets. The Iron Banner, a symbol powerful enough to start a new totalitarian uprising and capable of financing it. This morning, Jim comes up with a new lead. A man's been murdered in Mestia, Greece. But according to our records, he died in a prison camp in Europe six years ago. It's Tuesday morning when I arrive at Mestia. I head for the inn. Jim Andrews is waiting for me in my room. You sure this murdered guy was Otto Hessler? Without a doubt. You know the story, Steve. Just before the fall of Berlin, the bigwigs were called in and one of them was given the Iron Banner. We think this guy Hessler was entrusted with it. Yeah, but we thought he died six months later in a prison camp. I spotted him a week ago in Algiers. I found out he was going under the name of Beckstad. I dropped everything and tailed him and his pal here to Greece. Who was his pal? Well, all I could find out about him was his name, Zimmerman. They came here and put on a big act about being on a vacation. They stay here at the inn? I haven't been able to find out where they stayed. Then what? Yesterday morning, I heard a commotion out in the street. I ran down just as they fished Hessler's body out of a fountain. He had a bullet hole in his head. Hmm. And uh, Zimmerman? Not a sign of him, then or since. Steve, how does this add up to you? Well, I think that Hessler must have hidden the Iron Banner somewhere in this neck of the woods somehow. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. And then was taken prisoner afterwards. Yeah. And in prison, he got himself identified as dead, took himself a new name. Yeah, Beckstad. Right. He waited until he thought the time was ripe to produce the Iron Banner. Then he and his crony Zimmerman came back here to fish it out of its hiding place. Only Hessler got taken suddenly dead. And his pal Zimmerman got taken suddenly absent. Looks like Zimmerman pulled a double cross. Well, he could be in hiding. Afraid that the fellow that shot Hessler would do likewise to him. Uh, I hadn't thought of that. Did they make any contacts? Well, Hessler made two trips to the village doctor, a man with the name of Venakis. He also went to a big villa on the outside of town. People who live there are named Terescu. Anakis and Terescu. Hmm. Well, better check on those two leads. Come along. I hadn't better. Somebody might have noticed me making inquiries. Could be wise to me. I don't want to tip our hand. Okay, well, stay here, will you? I'll check with you later. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, Steve. Where'd it come from? Up the hill. That deserted mine? No. Yeah. Don't go near the window, but get up there, Steve. It may be our first break. Here, take this. You'll be all right? Yeah, I'm all right. cartridges of German manufacture. I decide to follow up the two leads Jim had mentioned. Hessler had visited a Dr. Anakos and the family called Terescu. Since the doctor is the closer, I call on him first. He isn't there, so I wait. Did I startle you, doctor? Why, yes. I'm afraid you did. 
How silly that the doctor should be startled to see patients sitting in his office. My nerves must be on edge. Overwork, perhaps. Yes, I've been very busy lately. The recent wet weather has brought on a lot of sickness. Did you just come back from a call? Why, yes. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Sorry, doctor, I'm not a patient. This is in the nature of official business, then. In a way. A man came to see you a couple of days ago, doctor, by the name of Beckstadt. Beck? Name seems to tinkle a bell. Oh, that's the man who was found in the fountain who bullet through his head yesterday morning. You seem to be up on all the details. In a small village, the doctor must also serve as coroner. Beckstad came to call on you the afternoon that he was murdered. Yes. Why? Well, ordinarily such a question would infringe upon medical ethics. But I don't think it would be any violation here if I tell you that he was suffering from insect bites. Insect bites? Yes, he told me I'd been fishing and had been bitten rather severely. And that indeed was the case. I prescribed the soothing lotion. Well, that doesn't help much. Did you ever see this man before? Never. Did he mention a friend of his who was traveling with him by the name of Zimmerman? Zimmerman? No. Well, thanks for the information, Doctor. I may be seeing you again. Dr. Anako seems to be in the clear, so my next stop is the second place Hessler had visited. I head through the quaint little town toward the Terescu Villa on the hill. Hi. Good afternoon, sir. Is this the Terescu Villa? Yes, sir. Is that the front entrance? Yes. Whom did you wish to see? I'm Madame Terescu. How do you do, Madame Terescu? I'm Steve Mitchell from the United States. I'd like to talk to you for a moment, if I may. Why, yes, Mr. Mitchell. What would you like to speak about? I was wondering if you could tell me anything about a man named Beckstad. Beckstad? No, the name is not familiar to me. Oh, Cardis. Yes, madam. That man who came calling here the other day for Mr. Terescu, what was his name? Beck... Beckstad? Yes, that was his name. Thank you, Cardis. Won't you come in, Mr. Mitchell? Thank you. This uh, Beckstadt came to see your husband, then? That is what he said. However, my husband was not at home. Won't you sit down, Mr. Mitchell? Thank you. He's been away at Athens all week on business. Did he say why he wanted to see your husband? No, I presumed it was regarding some business transaction. Uh, Mr. Mitchell, these questions you are asking, you are perhaps a friend of this person, Beckstadt? Well, you might put it that way. I'm uh, trying to find out who killed him. Killed? You hadn't heard about it? Why, no. I never leave the villa during my husband's absence. This Beckstadt, who was he, Mr. Mitchell? Well, I was hoping that you'd be able to help me on that. He came here to see my husband. I wonder why. Hmm. Uh, could you let me know at the village inn when your husband returned? Of course. I should like you to meet him. Thank you. I'll look forward to it. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Mitchell. Still at it, Curtis? Always bugs. I plant, they eat. I think they like the spray. I suppose you've lived here all your life. Yes, sir. Do you happen to know Dr. Anakis? Very well. A good doctor and a good man. You think pretty highly of him, huh? He has taken very well care of us. The village is a better place to live now than it was five years ago. He has saved many lives. I see. Well, thank you, Curtis. You're welcome. Something Cardis said gives me an idea, a wild one, but worth looking into. Back at the inn, I put through a call to the States. When I get the answer, I find out my idea isn't so wild after all. Hello, Dr. Anakos. I came to talk some more about Beckstadt. What more is there to talk about? Plenty. 
I suppose it'd come as news to you to know that Beckstadt's real name was Hessler and he was formerly one of Hitler's inner circle. Hessler? Inner circle? I do not understand. Doctor, an old gardener told me that you came here five years ago. That meant shortly after the war. I got to wondering where you were during the war and I checked on it. I do not follow you. It also occurred to me that a good way to fake a prison camp death would be to have a doctor on your side. Mitchell, I... The records of the prison camp where Hessler was showed the prison doctor to be a gent named Anakos. Yes, it was I. So, you lied to me from start to finish. I had no choice. My reputation was at stake. What do you mean? There was a typhus epidemic, many deaths, many certificates to be signed. You mean Hessler managed to have one made out for himself and slipped it in with the others? Exactly. I signed it unwittingly. You do not know the fatigue that comes with a doctor in an epidemic. Yeah. Well, go on. Apparently, Hessler escaped as the bodies were being taken out of the camp for burial. Later, when I realized my mistake, he said that if I opened my mouth about it, he would swear it was my idea, that I had done it for money. My license would have been taken away from me. I would... I was afraid. I said nothing. I see. The other day when Hessler came me under the name Beckstadt, I was naturally horrified to see him. Did he say what he was doing in this village? Yes, he said he had two reasons. One to pick up something which belonged to him, something which he had hidden near here. That could be the Iron Banner. Yeah, what else? He wanted to see an old sweetheart of his and insisted I tell him where she lived. An old sweetheart? Who? Madame Turescu. What? This time I'm telling you the truth, Mitchell. Goddess, is uh, Madame Turescu around? Madame? Oh, I forgot. What time is it? Twelve after five. Why? I was supposed to wake her at five sharp. She will be angry. Please come in, Mr. Mitchell. I will call her. Will you tell her I'd like to see her right away? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell! Mr. Mitchell! be all right, my dear. Just lie quietly and rest. Yes. Mm. Or it might be a sprain. I'll bandage it. What happened? I'm not sure. I came up to rest and I asked Cardis to call me at five. It was my fault, madame. The time slipped away from me. Do not blame yourself, Cardis. I do not. You may go now. You're most kind. Call if you need me. Then I fell asleep. And it became like a, a hot band of metal across my chest. I woke up partially, and I smelled the gas. And I tried to get over to the chat, but I, I couldn't manage it. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, if you hadn't come in when you did. I don't think that gas was any accident. No. Who was trying to kill you? The same man who killed Hessler. Oh. So now we quit playing games, huh? Yes. The time for that has passed. Okay, so the same guy who killed Hessler tried to get you with the gas. Who is it? I don't know. All right, let's start from the beginning. You were once Hessler's girlfriend. I lied for my husband's sake. He knows nothing about my past. He's coming home from Athens tomorrow, and I... Well, I hope that I could stay out of it. That the murder might be solved without my name coming into it. But it didn't turn out that way. I think Hessler had another reason for visiting this village besides wanting to see you. What do you mean? To pick up the Iron Banner. The Iron Banner. Have you ever seen it? No. Has anybody ever seen it? Are you trying to tell me that the big swastika doesn't exist? I'm trying to say that Hessler invented the whole story. He was drunk for power. And he hoped with the help of this legend to someday form a party of his own. Then there is no Iron Banner? No. 
Well, I don't get it. Then who killed Hessler and tried for you? I don't know. When Hessler was here, he mentioned some man who was traveling with him. Zimmerman. Yes, he hasn't been seen since the murder. Perhaps he's the killer. Maybe. But it'd make more sense if there was an iron banner. Zimmerman could have found out where it was hidden from Hessler and killed him and... But this way... Is it possible that Zimmerman decided to use the legend Hessler had invented? There were only two people who knew that there was no iron banner. Hessler and myself. Perhaps this is why Zimmerman killed Hessler and tried to kill me. That could be a possible answer. We must let you rest now, my dear. Please don't leave me alone. I'm afraid. My husband will be home tomorrow. Very well, my dear. I'll stay near, if it'll make you feel better. Thank you, doctor. Here's a sedative. Take it and you'll sleep well. Thank you. Good night, Mrs. Tedeschi. Good night, Mr. Mitchell. Good night. Good night, doctor. From the look on your face, it would appear you are no closer to a solution. You're so right. Matter of fact, I seem to be getting farther away from one by the moment. Yeah, <clears throat> looks like I'm just about licked. Well, good night, Doctor. Good night. <laughs> Back in my room at the inn, I stretch out on the bed to think the deal over, but I'm getting nowhere when the phone rings. It's Dr. Anakos who asks me to meet him. It seems there's been another murder. Oh, Mr. Mitchell. There. I sent for you because I think you'll be interested in dead man's papers. Zimmerman? Yes. Did you notice how the blood is smeared on his coat? Yeah. Well, perhaps the killer got some of it on himself. No, I don't get it more than ever. Zimmerman figured to be the logical guy behind all this. Oh, he gets killed too. So I guess the boy I'm after is still on the loose. Hey, wait a minute. What's the matter? Did you leave Madame Terescu alone? In the confusion, I didn't even think. Yes, I did leave her alone. This killing could be just a decoy to leave her unprotected. My car is outside. Hold it, you. Cardiff. Mr. Mitchell, Dr. Anakos, what's the matter? What are you doing here, Carters? Why, I was worried about Madame. I could not sleep. So I thought I'd come into the villa and see if she was all right. As I entered, I thought I heard a noise. What kind of a noise? I don't know. It seemed to come from her room. Madame Teresco! Madame Teresco! Yes? Dr. Anakos! Oh, come in. Are you all right? Why, yes, of course. What is the matter? <laughs> Nothing, I guess. We thought you might be in danger. I'm happy we were mistaken. You are feeling better. Oh, much thank you, Doctor. I think I will read for a while. I will be all right now. Well, good night, but lock your door when we go out. I will. Is Madame safe? Yes. Will there be anything else? Uh, no, thank you. Then, all of a sudden, something I've already seen but didn't pay any attention to rises right up and smacks me in the kisser. All the questions I've been asking myself pop back into my mind. Only this time, there are answers hanging on them. But there's nothing I can do until morning.
At sunrise, I meet Dr. Anakos near the villa. Pretty soon, we hear a car drive off from the other side. The car winds up the hill toward the abandoned mine. We give it a lead, then head for the doctor's car. Madame Turescu. So I was right after all. Why did you come here, Lily? To get the Iron Banner or to meet that sniper, or both? I told you the Iron Banner does not exist. Save it. You know, I got a hunch something went wrong. What do you mean, Mitchell? Figure it this way. Lily knew the Iron Banner was around here somewhere, so she and her husband moved here. Wait a minute. Your husband is supposed to be in Athens on business. Mitchell, he could be the sniper. Right. You found out from Hessler it was hidden here. You killed him and your husband came here looking for it. But the escaping gas in her room. You rigged that as a cover to take suspicion off yourself, didn't you? You have no proof of any of this. Right now I'm more interested in the Iron Banner than I am in proof. What happened to it? Did your husband give you a double cross, Lily? He wouldn't do a thing like that. You know, I think you're right. In that case, he must still be around here waiting for you. You keep her on ice, doctor. I guess that does it, Lily. We've got you for murder and the Iron Banner is out of circulation. What made you first suspect her? Remember when you were in her living room and she was supposedly under sedatives? You mean she got through the window, killed Zimmerman, and then returned? Yeah. Remember that smear of blood on Zimmerman's coat that we noticed as if the killer had brushed up against it? Yes. It was your wrist. That's what gave you away. You could not have seen any blood. I. Yeah, that's the point. You changed the bandage. I spotted it in your room. You see that little thin ridge of gum? When you put the new bandage on, you didn't get the tape in exactly the same place. And that is what did it. You might say that's what gummed up the work. 